Faith versus truth? I know who's gonna win this fight. Let's do this. Hey everybody, Bionic Dance here. And I would like you to meet a YouTuber named Unrelated Philosophy. And he wants to discuss the difference between faith and truth. Many people, and in our hyper-rational, new enlightenment age, have been tricked into thinking that truth, all truth, and I don't mean truth in quotes, but rather truth with a capital T, is found in a test tube, fossil, an algorithm, and only there. Actually, Chester, I'd be much more inclined to call those facts, because at least you can prove them. What a lot of people call truth has a tendency to be a bit more slippery, a bit more subjective. I mean, what some people call true, other people might call, what are you kidding me? Really. As a result, many people, with the help of the New Atheist mantra, have invented a false caricature of faith. They construe faith as, to quote Nietzsche, not wanting to know the truth, and to have belief in the teeth of evidence, to quote Dawkins. Uh-oh! I've been infested with lap kitties. Anyway, I don't so much agree with Nietzsche, I do agree with Dawkins. You see, I think Nietzsche kind of has it backwards. It's not that people don't want to know the truth, it's that there's something that they really, really, really want to be true. Now, I do agree with Dawkins in that when the evidence contradicts that thing that they really want to be true, they'll hold on to it with a fucking death grip. When atheists, thinking of themselves as the sole defenders of reason, confront Christians with the latest scientific trend that the atheists themselves much of the time don't understand, that supposedly disproves God, many Christians don't know how to refute this seemingly hard empirical evidence, and so they fall back on saying, I just have faith. Well, yeah, they believe because they believe, because they really want God to exist and therefore they trust that he, she, it, or they does, which will go to something you're going to say later. These Christians, without knowing it, have adopted the position of fideism. Fides is Latin for faith, and fideism literally means faithism. In doing this, Christians are announcing to the world, God isn't truth, but we're going to believe in him anyway. Okay, you're putting me, an atheist, in the bizarre position of having to defend Christians, but I'm going to anyway. Because you see, nowhere in there are they actually saying that God isn't real. What they're really saying is that they may not be able to back up their position with facts, but they believe anyway. They're convinced. They have trust that their God is real. They may not be able to prove it, but they believe it anyway because they feel that it's real. Now, I don't believe them. I don't buy it for a second. But they're not actually saying that God isn't real. This is not biblical faith. Nowhere in the Bible is anyone commanded to have faith in something that isn't true. Well, not explicitly, no. But the Bible does claim that its contents are true and does command people to believe it. Unfortunately for them, a very large portion of what's in there is bunk. Jesus himself says in John 14:6, I am the way and the truth and the life. So one does not need to abandon truth to believe in Jesus. He is truth. No, Jesus claims to be truth, and we're expected to take his fucking word for it. So God is not the psychological manifestation of wish thinking. God is objectively true. Since when? The only evidence we have for the existence of this god creature is the word of a book written by ancient goat herders and a bunch of men in silly robes telling us he's real. How is God objectively true? Where's your facts? Where's your evidence? He exists whether people believe in him or not. If he exists, then yeah, sure, he exists whether people believe in him or not. But you're claiming that he exists. And if you're going to do that, you're going to need to produce some evidence or otherwise rely on that faith crap you're talking about. What then is faith? The first definition of faith at dictionary.com is confidence or trust in a person or thing. To have faith in God is to trust God. And this is where your argument really starts to fall apart. 
I don't know if you're being disingenuous, lying, or just mistaken, but either way, if you want to rely on dictionary.com, I can go there. But you see, the next two definitions are much closer to the truth. Definition number two, belief that is not based on proof. Definition number three, belief in God or in the doctrines of religion. Think about it. And now this false dichotomy collapses on itself. To have faith is not to believe in something in defiance of the truth. Instead, it is to have trust in the truth, to trust that God and his word are true. Trust whether you have the facts to prove what you're trusting is true or not. But what do you do when the very concept of God as truth is being called into question? My advice is, is to respond philosophically. Answer their question with this question. If God doesn't exist, can one even speak of truth? Remember what I said about truth being a subjective, slippery thing? Why I'd rather deal in facts instead? This is why. C.S. Lewis wrote, If the solar system was brought about by an accidental collision, then the appearance of organic life on this planet was also an accident. And the whole evolution of man was an accident too. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Do you have any idea how old and worn out that chestnut is? I mean, come on. If it's not intentional, it has to be an accident. Well, no, it bloody doesn't. The universe has rules, laws, physics. They're not intentional, but it makes it so that when there's an action, there's a reaction. Certain things behave certain ways, like it or lump it. And that makes it so that the universe could come about, humanity could come about, evolution could come about without anything directing it. Like it or not, C.S. Lewis is wrong on this one. I see no reason for believing that one accident should be able to give a correct account of all the other accidents. Well, fortunately, your incredulity is not evidence. And this is something that atheists should take seriously, as Darwin himself did. You know, Darwin accomplished a lot, but it's not like he's some patron saint of atheism. I admire what he did, but it's not like I worship the guy. He's not my Jesus. If man's mind is an accident, then upon what basis and for what reason should we believe that our minds by themselves are capable of acquiring truth? All right, Skippy, I'll play along for a second. Let's just suppose, let's just suppose that you're right and that our minds are in fact the product of an accident, that they're not the product of intent or design or whatever, all right? Well, aren't we still getting input from our eyes? Input from our ears, input from taste glands, from nerves that can feel touch. Aren't we still doing that? Aren't we still getting data from the universe around us, able to see the world and our brains? Our brains are processing it into a semi-coherent view of the world, of the universe around us. Isn't that getting truth? Isn't that doing exactly what you say we shouldn't be able to do without a god? In fact, where is the god in this equation? Why should a god even be required to be able to do any of that? Explain it to me. In conclusion, truth and faith are not at odds with each other. God is truth, and faith is trust in God. And in conclusion, I have a kitty. Your argument fails. If truth can't exist independently of God, then how could the inexistence of God be true? And this has been another theist attempt to do an end run around having to produce facts to prove God's existence. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. Please take the time to rate this video. And hey, if you dig what I do, subscribe. And please visit my Sazzle store, where you'll find all kinds of Bionic Dance merchandise. If you don't like what I'm saying, there's a good chance you're the reason I'm saying it.